previous tutorial, we talked about the ability to be able to change the speed of a clip. And it was done, if you remember, hovering over the edit point of a clip and holding the control key, you get the time stretch tool and you can drag to make a clip shorter, which will speed it up, or pull it out to make it slower if you've got room in your timeline. Otherwise, you're going to create a cross dissolve or whatever. So you can do that, but it changes, as you can see, the length of the clip. So the clip is now what, minus 13 seconds or minus 14 seconds as to what it was before. So we're actually changing the length of the clip. But sometimes you want to have a speed change, but you don't want to change your editing decisions on your timeline. Now, I've got an in point and an out point, and I'm happy with the length of this clip, but I want to have a speed change. OK, if I go to the end of this clip and I just go back a frame, you can see it finishes there. But say I wanted it to finish a little bit later. If I slow the clip down, I'm going to make the clip longer and I don't want the clip to be longer. So Sony Vegas Pro has given us a tool to be able to change the speed of the clip using something called an envelope. And when you do that, it will not change your edit points, but you can speed up or slow down the clip as long as you've got sufficient headroom and tailroom. You need head footage, you need tail footage to make this work. If your clip is just a particular length long and you're trying to do this, you'll start looping the footage one way or the other and it'll look terrible. So you must have spare footage at the beginning and at the end to make this work. But this tool will allow you to slow down the clip or speed up the clip, keep your editing decisions, your in and out points, and what's more, you can even animate this over time. And it's done with something called an envelope. So if I right click on the event, on the video event, I want to actually add this envelope to, you'll see that we've got this item here that says insert remove envelope. And the envelope option we've got is velocity. Notice you can remove envelopes this way as well. So if you turn around and say it's rubbish, I want to get rid of it, you can remove it this way. So I'm going to click velocity and I get this sort of green line here. Now this line represents the speed of the clip. At the moment it is at 100%, which means standard speed. If I pull it up, the speed of the clip is going to go faster and faster. Now, bear in mind, I'm on the last frame of this clip and I'm right at this point. So if I pull it up too much more, what I'm going to suddenly find is, bang, the beginning of the clip has been brought back in and I've gone beyond the end of my tail footage. So this is the sort of danger you have and you need to be careful of this all the time in Vegas. So I'm going to control Z to undo that and take it back to how it was. And if I pull it down, I'm actually going to slow the clip right down so it will end earlier effectively. I won't see as much of the clip because it's all going very slowly. It'll take a long time to get from this point to this point because it's going at, what are we at here? We're at 51%, uh, uh, so a half speed. But look what happens when I pull it down even further. I can go down, 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 and then suddenly I'm in minus figures, which effectively means the clip is going backwards. And you can go all the way back to minus 100, but only if you've got the right head and tail footage because if you look on my clip you'll see that it might not be doing exactly what you want it to do so let's just have a look and see what we've got we're sort of going oh, backwards we're going backwards the wrong way and then at some stage yet yeah, bang we suddenly end up in the wrong place okay so just bear in mind that you've got to be very careful how you use this so i'm going to control z to undo it so we're now back at 100%. So you can speed up and slow it down. You're going to see more or less of the clip depending on the speed that you go, but you can't go beyond certain points without problems. But the great thing you can do is you can animate this. I'm just going to click along. This here is a handle. You can only just see it, but it is actually a point, a control point. And if you add more control points, you can cause it to start slow, say, and get faster or start fast and get slower and change over time depending on how many handles you add in there. And you add a handle simply by double clicking on the clip. So if I double click on the clip, there's my handle that's been added and I can pull this first handle now down and I can take it right down to some really low figure, say 18 or 5%, yeah, 5%. So it's gonna start really slowly and then speed up to the correct speed. So let's just play that through. You can see it's going really slowly. It's slowly getting faster and faster and now we're at the correct speed. But what I could do is say add a point here, double click, and take it right up. Looking at the end and just making sure you can see from this little thumbnail, I'm not going to go beyond the footage that's actually there. If you go beyond the footage, you'll see that it'll pop back to the beginning of the clip and that'll look really weird. So that's there, you see, pop back. So I'm going to go back to, that's as fast as it can go. So let's have a little look at that. Really slow. And then it's got normal speed and now it's going to get faster and faster 
until it's going up to about 200%. It's going to carry on going through that speed. And if I want to, at this point here, if I just click at this point, I could say add another point to hold it at that speed. And then possibly a last point here where I can pull it down and slow it down and bring it back to roughly where I want it to end. So I'm just, just going to go to the end of the clip and let's just make sure that we're at exactly the place we want to see it. So I pull this point back. Where do I want it to finish? I want it to finish roughly there. So it's going to go really fast in the middle and then slow down back to that point. So I can click here, slow down, really slow. Oh, actually, I've gone too far. You can see it's actually going backwards. So you just need to be a little bit careful that you don't go into negative territory, which is what I did there in minus eight. So that's 5%. So it will still be going slowly, but it's going to go really slowly. Okay, so that's how you can animate it over time. You can also right click on any of these points and change how they work. Now, if you look at it, it sort of goes in one way and out the other way from this particular point. So it slows down and speeds up. I'm just going to zoom in, actually. Let's have a little look. I'll just click on that point and we'll zoom in using the middle mouse wheel. And you can see it kind of it's got an angle that goes in and an angle that goes out. So you can right click on that point and you can change the way it works. So a linear fade will change the way it's actually going between the two points. Or you can choose a sharp fade or you can choose you know, a different versions of the way it's going to go through. You can even delete a point. So now I've got a smooth run from one to the other. If I right click on this point here, I can set different ones, set to normal, I can set to 50%, set to zero. So if a point's in the wrong place, you can actually set them here, or you can go set to, and you can actually set a particular value if you want to at that particular place. And at the bottom, you can flip all points and you can thin all points. Now, if you flip all points, they're all going to go exactly the opposite way around. And if you thin all points, it's not really going to make an awful lot of difference with this one. In fact, what I'll do is I'll right click, I'll uh, control Z a couple of times and bring back in the other point. And now if I right click and I go thin all points, well, it's not going to get rid of them. It thinks it needs all of these ones, although I know I can get rid of that one. So I'm actually going to right click and get rid of that particular one and delete that point. But if you want to add a point in, you can go along the line. You can either double click or you can actually go in and say, I want to add a point and choose what it's going to look like. Or reset all takes it back to the beginning. So I'm going to control Z to undo that. There is my curve. It now looks a lot better. In fact, I will reset all. I'm going to right click and reset all because I want to show you one other way of doing it, which is actually fairly cool. Sometimes you've got a rough idea of what you want and you want to just draw it. It would be a lot easier if you can say, I want to change speed and I want to start slow and go fast and start slow. Wouldn't it be good if I could draw it? Well, if you hover over the line and hit the shift key, you will get the envelope tool. And what you can do is you can draw an envelope. And just keep an idea, making sure you can see looking at that very last thumbnail to get an idea of where it's going to finish. So I want it to finish roughly about there. And when you let go, it adds in the points that you want. So, I mean, that's an absolutely crazy envelope, obviously. So it can go backwards and forwards and all over the place. So it's not going to be particularly good. But I can go in and sort of say, oh, do you know what? Move that one up or move that one down and see what difference it makes. So you can play with all of those. Or I can right click and I can go thin all points. Well, it has thinned them already because, as you saw, when I drew, I had hundreds of points appearing and it automatically thinned them down to the minimum level it can get away with. So if you ever create an envelope, and obviously this is a completely bananas envelope, I wouldn't normally use anything like this. But if you ever do create envelopes, just bear in mind that you can draw them by hovering over the line, holding the shift key, and then I can say, actually, you know what, take them all back to about normal. That's all pretty fast, and let's thin them out automatically. It's all going to be at one particular speed. Or, do you know what, I want to start again, shift key, make it slow, fast, slow, fast, and then go backwards for a while, and then all the way back up, and it's just doing it again. Let go, and then I've got all kinds of different looks. Okay, so you have all these options that you can play with. You can do some pretty impressive animation, playing around and having fun and making people look very silly if you want. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Have fun with this tool. It is something to play with and make people do silly things, going backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. Um, I've seen plenty of these sorts of clips on YouTube. So have fun. Now you know how to do it. My name's Andrew Davis, and thanks for watching. Thank you.